This morning, John Irving is with us. His new novel is One Person. It is an exploration of sexual identity set in the early days of the AIDS crisis. His books, including A Prayer for Owen Meany, you remember that, and The World According to Garp, have sold tens of millions of copies. He also won an Oscar for his screenplay of The Cider House Rules, and John Irving joins us today. Hello, John Irving. Hi. Hi. People say that this is so timely about a bisexual man, and I'm thinking, with the way that you write, how could it be timely? You must have had this idea for a very long time. Well, I, I have every idea for a for very, very long, long time. time yes. I'm pretty slow. Uh, I let <laughs> or you're ahead of your time, John. Well, or you're I, ahead of your time. This novel was pretty much fully formed 10 years, almost 12 years ago. And I didn't begin writing it until uh, June of 2009. But the writing process itself was very fast for me, unusually so. Maybe because it's a first-person narrator, and when you're in that voice of a first-person narrator, the novel somehow is more quickly forthcoming. I'm not sure why. Here's what you said about it, writing in Amazon.com. In one person, in one person is about a young bisexual man who falls in love with an older transgender woman, Miss Frost, a librarian of Vermont Public Library. The bi guy is the main character, but two transgender women are the heroes of this novel in the sense that they, these two characters, are the ones my bisexual narrator, Billy Abbott, most looks up to. Wow. They're the heroes. Well, it, it's a novel about uh, our lingering, uh, still with us, uh, intolerance for sexual differences. I somehow thought I was done with that subject when I finished The World According to Garp in the late 1970s. I thought, well, I won't write about that again or have to write about that again. but. I think um, sexual intolerance is still with us in a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, this may be a somewhat um, less radical, more um, realistic novel than The World According to Garp, but it is still is on that subject. I chose the bisexual main character because I knew he would uh, generate more distrust from straights and gays alike. He, he is uh, a deliberately chosen sexual outsider or misfit. And perhaps a, a, a part of his attraction to these two uh, transgender women of different generations is that um, he recognizes that they are even more marginalized in society or even more distrusted than he is. I you think you also it. say in the next sentence, uh, Billy is not me. Yes. <laughs> and no, he's not me, but I think there's so much in my novels that comes from a what-if uh, proposition. As, as a young boy, uh, I suspect, like many young boys growing up or coming of sexual age in the 50s and 60s, um, I was attracted to just about everyone, mm -hmm. my friends' mothers, girls my own age, uh, even the occasional older boy mm -hmm. on the wrestling team, my attractions were all over the map. Uh, Did you feel confused by it? No. Or it's just a normal, uh, right of path, normal way of growing up? Not so much confused, but I, I, uh, the sympathy remained. I thought, um, well, just, just because it turned out that I liked girls and I was straight, <laughs> it doesn't mean that I'm allowed to forget yeah. that moment of, of coming of age when I felt these desires and attractions uh, to a disturbing variety of people. Mm. Therefore, how can I judge other people who act upon those desires? I am so fascinated, John, by your writing style, because I often think if I would write, I would, I would start with the first line. Like, your first line is, I'm going to begin by telling you about Miss Frost. So I was instantly drawn in by, who is she, what does she do? But uh, it's been said about you, and I know that you always write with the end in mind. You always know how it's going to end. Was that true in this case? Because this book is very complicated. Did it you is, know what the it, end would be? It is true in this case. This is a dialogue ending. Uh, there have been three in, in my novels, A Widow for One Year, The Cider House Cider Rules, House. also a dialogue ending. And, and when that happens, it's a line of dialogue that you've heard before, usually in a different context, sometimes from a different speaker. Mm -hmm. But it's like a refrain. It's like a piece of music that you hear again. I, I like those endings. I can't engineer them or make them happen. <laughs> yeah. But when they do happen, I feel lucky because it's, it's a, aha. There's that moment that the reader feels, oh, here comes that again. Yes, I love an aha moment. Uh, yeah. There is this. Time Magazine has a profile you called The Wrestler. John Urban was the, was the quintessential American novelist. 
Now he's poised to reclaim his title. Hmm. Does that resonate with you? Well, that's one of those legacy issues, which I think um, even when you get to be my age, if you start thinking about that too much, you might as well stop. <laughs> uh, well said. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think that's my business. I, 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 uh, that's a younger writer um, uh, of, of that piece, and I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased um, uh, that he feels that way. Um, John Irving, newsflash, you're still young. You are still yeah. young. And my favorite line in the book, we are formed by what we... Desire. Desire. I love that line. I love it. Thanks, John. Great to see you. Thank you.